One year ago today, Newcastle United were officially taken over. This club now has positivity, hope and ambition. The new consortium and Eddie Howe have completely changed the way Newcastle United act as a club. And on this Newcastle Fans TV documentary, we go through all the highlights of the last 12 months. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Oh. <laughs> I'll drink to that. I'll drink to that. Hashtag fucking cans. cans. Oh my god, boys. It is finally happened. Newcastle United have been taken over. Look at that. Complete. Takeover complete. Takeover complete. <sighs> I can't believe it. I'm just, oh, I'm absolutely, I am literally on the verge of tears. Like we spoke about it last night, and I just, I'm just overwhelmed with emotion. I can't believe he's gone. I can't believe we've, we're getting our club back. We're getting a club back. The, I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, it's, it's mental. I just hope they do what we've spoken about and bring ex players back for ambassadorial roles. Um, we invest wisely. We invest into the youth academy, into the infrastructure, and oh, lads, man, fucking hell. It's done. It's, Finally fucking done. I am over the moon. Like, I am sick of the sight of that man and I'll never have to look at him again, honestly. The first time the takeover fell through, I was absolutely gutted. I was uh, honestly inconsolable. So when this time came around, I thought, you know what? International break, January transfer is coming up. Steve Bruce is getting shite results. Surely it's just another rumour mill starting up again to get us, get us back on side, to get us past another transfer window without investment. I was Mr. Negative Nelly until this morning when I woke up. Still didn't believe it when I went to sleep last night. And then this morning I woke up expecting an announcement today. I'm st I'm hyperactive. I feel like a kid on Christmas. It's my birthday, Christmas and anniversary all come at once. I don't know what this I'm absolutely buzzing. Obviously, you know, there are issues to be dealt with, but I'm just so glad that it's over the line. So I popped along to St. James's Park. You didn't see me on camera. I had toothache, believe it or not. So I was the cameraman that night. But that didn't stop me. Oh, no. I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fans celebrating Tesco across the road. Had run out of cans. Even Sam Fender was amongst it. They were all seeing his interview with BBC Radio the next morning. And this is how it went down. Now this, this is what we've been waiting for. Newcastle fans singing arm in arm with beers. Bottles, cans, everything. It's been a long, long 14 years, but this, this is what's over. He's out of our club! He's out of our club! That fat cockney bastard! He's out of our club! I don't think I could have put it better myself. You know, we've been waiting a long time for this. And the smiling faces. I know there's a song about all the old smiling faces, but I think it seems appropriate tonight. Newcastle fans are celebrating. Look at Sir Boy Robson's statue. I'm sure you'd be watching, thinking, Newcastle United are back. Look at it. So many shapes, there's a football in the air, and just above us, war flags. <laughs> They're back. They're back. You know, where does the fan channel? We, we don't speak for all the fans, but I think this is one thing that most Newcastle fans really wanted, was a takeover and it's finally been completed. Thursday, October the 7th, 2021 was the day of that. Look at that. Look at the lights where the chic is. Absolutely incredible scenes here. Absolutely incredible. We're no longer a sleeping giant. This giant has just woken up and Newcastle United are back. And now, Come on! <laughs> as you can see, all the fans there. Look how many fans there are. On a Thursday night in Newcastle and the international break, you can imagine what it's going to be like in 10 days when we play Tottenham. But we've got ambition, we've got hope, we've got something to look forward to now as fans. They've got a tough job in the hands of these new owners, but you know what? All the best. And if you can deliver what, you, what you're saying you can do, oh, we'll be eternally grateful. Eternally grateful. One thing I do want to say, and one man who I hope is sitting with a little drink to his side is Kevin Keegan, because this man wanted this. 13 years ago when he left the football club he knew that Newcastle United could actually achieve something 
without Mike Ashley. And today we've done the first bit. Mike Ashley's no longer here. Let's just hope. Let's just hope that Newcastle can actually, you know, what an FA Cup. Could you imagine winning an FA Cup? That would do for a lot of Newcastle fans. You know, that would do for the older fans, the younger fans, everybody. And hopefully this fan base can be united. You know, no more squabbles anymore. Let's all get behind this regime. Let's all get behind Newcastle United. Let's stay up this season and let's see where this club can go because this club can actually do something. It can be something. And we've got so many good people that support this football club. Likes of Warren Barton, Rob Lee, Alan Shearer. You know, like even people on Sky Sports that have been probably getting a bit emotional. Keith Downey and, and um, Pete Graves, you know, been absolutely fantastic when it comes to this takeover. George Corkin, you know, Liam Kennedy, people like that. Chris Woff, friend of the channel as well. So many people have backed this takeover and it's finally come to fruition. So as the news broke, Newcastle fans galore were absolutely delighted and we bumped into some very well-known Newcastle United fans and of course they were jubilant as ever. This is surreal, all this is so surreal. I grew up in Ireland as the only Newcastle fan in my school. I was laughed at all throughout my childhood and teenage years. Right now, we're the richest club on the planet. Who chose poorly now, huh? Mate, honestly, coming down here I thought, it's, oh, it's going to be good, it's going to be alright. I was Leah, it's still going on. Ten cans, Leah, it's still going on. I'm enjoying it. You've got to enjoy it. You've got to. This is what we've been waiting for for a long fucking time. I know Staveley was here four years ago, but honestly, when this all broke down in 2020, I thought that was it. We've missed the boat. In the space of 24 hours, we've gone from Ashley to he's gone. He's, he's literally gone inside a few hours. It's. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And you can see the scenes right here. I don't think Look any of them. Get the yeah. Out. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Honestly, I was just saying to, to Deanna, were Man City fans doing this in 2008? I, I don't think so. Like, this is a this is proper fan base. It's like we've won the league already. It's like we've won a cup. Like, stop having to go, people. Oh, shall we boycott? Shall we not? Oh, you should buy a pint. You shouldn't. Oh, shall you buy a top? Shall you not? Literally, this is the moment where all the fans are together again. All that fighting between fans is done today. Um, we've not even started playing a football match yet. And already, I'm over the moon because honestly, this is the moment where we all come back together again. And if it's United, it's United. Honestly, mate, I'm, I'm gassed. <laughs> so as you've seen, the fans are absolutely over the moon. What a night it was. But we had to speak to the man who broke the news. There's all the reporting just behind us there. Johnny grabbed him for a quick chat. Can't, I can't believe, actually, we're standing here talking about this after all these years of reporting on it and months of wondering if it's going to go through or not. Um, it's been, this has been a, a, a really, really mad day and all my, my fellow reporters I've spoken to who've been up here at different stages, we've all just looked at each other and just gone, crazy day, and, then it's, and it's just felt like that. It's been, it's been really, really good to feel part of. I'm pleased for you guys that, that you're happy. Um, I got a little bit emotional myself earlier because... Um, I mean, I'm not a Newcastle fan, but I've covered the club for a, a long time. And when we were doing the live, updating the, that it was almost there, and then when we broke the news that the takeover was done, we actually could hear people down, down behind us at St James's Park, down near the Bobby Robson statue, shouting and roaring at everything we said. And it was just, it just, was, it was just a really, really emotional moment. And it, it kind of just kind of made me realise how much it, it meant to everyone. And it just kind of actually made me feel a little bit upset. And I thought, God, what, what's going on here? But I think, I think that's just what happens when you, when you report on a story of this magnitude, you realise importance to everyone else. And then it kind of made me feel a bit like that. So, um, so yeah, it was a bit weird. But listen, it's, it's great, as I said, earlier where we've we stood in we stood here so many times um looking over the stadium talking about negative negative stuff all the time in front of the stadium uh, time and time again freezing cold in the dark and yet here we are and for once it's a it's a joyful moment and everyone's happy and if i'm honest with me if I'm honest with you my time covering this club i never thought it would probably arrive and the takeover was done but steve bruce just lasted one more game that defeat against tottenham was the last straw for the new ownership Almost every Newcastle fan wanted him out. The winless run took its toll, and Steve Bruce was on his way out of St James's Park. 
I mean, first and foremost, delighted that it's happened now. I think uh, the, the points that were being made in the group chat and among some other Newcastle fans as well is the longer he stays in charge, the more damage will be done and that becomes irreversible. You know, we saw under Mike Ashley leaving Steve McLaren in till the 11th hour. Rafa came in, did his best, but it still wasn't enough to keep us in the Premier League. Uh, so acting now, you know, he's, they've given Bruce his 1,000th game in charge. They've given him uh, an opportunity to say, look, this is who I am. This is the football I want to play. Give me a chance. It didn't pay off on Sunday against Spurs. And now they've uh, parted ways, like you say, allegedly mutual consent. So uh, the both parties agreeing to a, a fee, an undisclosed fee for Bruce to uh, to leave the club with Graham Jones taking temporary charge. So uh, the, the statement says they are looking for a new manager. The hunt for a manager is on. But yeah, it's just crazy times now to think that this is actually happening. Like we sing and shout about it. We tweet about it. We make videos about it. Bruce gone, Ashley out. It's actually happening. It's actually here. Like 20th of October should be like down as a as a national day in Newcastle history. Like the fact that we've actually got rid of this <laughs> old dinosaur management and we're now moving it officially into the 21st century. Nabi Solano and Alan Shearer did feel for the sacking of Steve Bruce. He did keep Newcastle up for two seasons. The speculation was rife. Who was coming through the door at St James's? If the best managers in the world at the moment they are busy. If you see the Premier League, you no. Know, if you fancy Guardiola, or fancy Mourinho, or fancy Pochettino, or fancy Totti, or all of many the great managers, they are busy at the moment. So I believe is you need to these people, like I said before, working inside the the club, see really what we like, and have a plan, have a plan. Nobody's building from. You won't see tomorrow on through three weeks time the team fighting for the for the title of the league or pre, for the Premier League. No, it need to will take a little bit of time. I, I actually feel sorry for Steve and his uh, and his family of what he's had to go through and what he's been through. Um, uh, as you all know, I'm I'm a good friend of his, um, and I, I I really have disliked what I've read in certain quarters and what his family have had to go through. I get. Once you're a manager and you don't get results, you open yourself up to criticism, and there's there's no one understands that more than more than Steve. But I think he took the job on in almost impossible circumstances, and within the two years, whether you like the football or not, he get a, he got us into reasonable positions. Lee was kindly invited to the overlap, where he spoke to Jamie Carragher, Paul Scholes, and Gary Neville about two men that he would have liked in the short-term basis at Newcastle United. It's the hope that we wanted because it's, Gary, you've talked about it numerous of times recently. Jamie, you've got, you know, Scouse has Geordies. And we've been, had the life just sucked out of us for so many years. And, you know, it, that mindset, you're thinking, oh, it's negative. I hope I get a point today. That'll change in time when the playing squad will get better, we'll invest. You'll see the whole city, the area, youth development, the stadium, the training ground. It's a big, big time for us as Geordies. And we've waited and we're the last club in the Premier League to actually have a takeover. And we've got that now and we can't, we can't wait, can we? Not Steve the Bruce. A bit. Then who? Who do you want? And who realistically can you get? If I had a magic wand, I would have in long term, I'd probably go for someone like a Mancini. But for short term, someone like a Brendan Rodgers or an Eddie Howe to gradually play better expansive football, climb the table because that is expected with the money coming in. At the next batch of players or the next manager, people don't want to be this first batch, they want to be the second batch. Because yeah. what you've got an idea, if we bring Brendan Rodgers, we'll get us to fifth or sixth, Eddie Howe, whoever it may be, and then we'll get Mancini. It's the same with players. You're not going to get the best players right now, so you have to be realistic. So whoever you're thinking of signing as a manager or a player, no, you're almost getting brought into a certain job. And then we're going to try and move you on and get better till we get to a certain point. Maybe Jesse Lingard would be a good sign. He's not playing here, but would you leave Man United to go to a team who were 19th? If you're Declan Rice, would you, England's central midfield player, would you go and play for Newcastle? I think it's going to be two or three years before we get where we're going to get, uh, get to. So it become official. The worst kept secret was how Eddie Howe was appointed the new Newcastle United manager just behind me here at St James's Park. It was impressing a lot of people just his work ethic by coming in the door at 6am in the morning. So he's, he's got such longevity left in the game and it was really encouraging and he's up for the challenge. He's raring to go. We saw that yesterday, arriving at the training ground before 7am where you two would still be uh, in bed. And it was just great to see. And like, again, another example of um, how stupid some 
sections of the media <coughs> talk sport can be when you know we expect that world and everything in it but the reality was every single one of us was buzzing because our manager turned up for work in the morning during an international break Unfortunately, results didn't come straight away for Eddie Howe's new Newcastle United. And being dumped out of the FA Cup to Cambridge United was certainly not in his plans. However, a burst of new signings were coming through the door at St James's Park. And by God, did they make a difference. Well, they've just landed one of the best right-backs England, Europe has to offer for a bargain fee. twelve Was it £12 million going up to uh, £15 million? Gathered pace, it came out of nowhere and everywhere was put reporting it. The Telegraph, to credit to them, they were the first ones to report it and then obviously the TV companies and what have you. But Chris Wood, obviously, as I say, we're, we've pinched them from Burnley, we've made them weaker and whatever you think of Chris Wood, it makes us stronger. Bruno Gremes, uh I didn't think it would get announced uh, whilst we were here, but it has been, so... It's good news. Um, look, I haven't seen him in action. I don't know a huge amount about him, but we know that centre midfield, we've talked about it, has been a <laughs> well, a small problem for a little while. And um, box to box midfielder from defence to attack is going to be that link, which we're probably missing, really. Newcastle United make another sign in and signing left back Matt Target from Aston Villa on a loan deal up until the end of the season. He currently has a uh, contract up until 2025, I believe. Let me know in the comments what you think of the sign. I'm relatively happy with it. I mean, you know, it's not groundbreaking. It's not an earth-shattering, exciting signing. But I've always been, to be honest, I've actually quite liked him as a fullback at Aston Villa. Dan Byrne, it's official. It's come late in the day. So he's here, the giant six foot seven. He's going to be lethal in the air. We know that. Um, playing a left back, you can obviously play a centre back. We signed my target earlier on today as well. Um, I'm in two minds about the signing. Yes, it's great that we've got a local lad, and he's he obviously was on the books at Newcastle as a youngster and went out through the divisions and made made, made his way up at Brighton. So the new signings were through the door. E I I I O up the Premier League we go. Amanda Stavely, Mia Dad Gadusi, Jamie Rubin and the PIF all made little but simple changes. They removed the Sports Direct signs. They moved a particular statue. I don't know which statue we're on about. <laughs> it was all those little changes that made a massive difference to the fans for Newcastle United. But even in people inside the building behind us, pay rises for staff members, 
But most importantly, it was the transition for the Newcastle United women's team, as over 22,000 Newcastle United supporters saw them put on a fantastic display as Becky Langley's side beat Annick Town by four goals to nil. A sensational afternoon for all involved. By the bell end who used to own us just didn't engage with this club and this area and just more. It's, he abandoned this, this, this club as in the women's team and to see so many people turn out today in a tier four game that was the highest domestic attendance in women's football so, this season. Watford Burnley didn't have this attendance yesterday. Watford Burnley. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. What a turnout. Um, I can imagine there were some tears in the um, in the dressing room leading up to that scene in the crowd. I was getting a bit emotional as well, seeing them walk out to local hero. And because we've obviously been following the team for, for a, a good number of years now, we've had manager, captain and the two playmakers on the podcast. We knew how much it meant to them. So it was an incredible moment for them. I'm, I'm so kind of proud of them from afar. Sounds like a proud dad, doesn't he? It, that's what it feels like, though. It's an incredibly family, family. It was a family day, I thought. I think we're just so inspired by the crowds to, you know, have that many people come and support our women's team is just a dream come true. Um, when we were warming up, the stadium was starting to fill, and you know, it just you saw the Gallagher end started to open up. You saw the Leases stand start to fill, and then 15 minute delay on kickoff just because there's 5,000 people outside is just. It's things you can only dream of. That doesn't happen in women's football, and it has today, and that's something we're just incredibly proud of. What can we get when we move up through the leagues? I mean, look at the support. There was people here from everywhere. There's people that's travelled over 200 miles just to support us, and I think it's amazing. It's, it's overwhelming, and it's something that will live with all of us forever. Um, you've, we've made history at the end of the day, I mean, what a day to do it on. So, summer had came. Newcastle was safe. Newcastle was splashing the cash. The owners backed Eddie Howe once more and a ton of players once again come through the door. Matt Target is now a Newcastle United player. I've said £15 million. It was two to £3 million in the January, so we had him on loan till the summer and then £12 million today. But we've signed an England international for the second time this year, everybody. Who would have thought that? Not under Mike Ashley, no, no, no. But Kieran Trippier came in in January. And now we've got Nick Pope, who's going to be coming in, signing a fairly long-term deal. A little bit surprised, perhaps, maybe. It's not a position I thought Newcastle are desperate to strengthen. Sven Botman, everybody, has signed on the dotted line. I'm happy about it. We've been after him and Diego Carlos since January. Carlos has obviously buggered off to Aston Villa. He's the fool there. But we've got our man, left-footed, tall judge centre-back who has been away on holiday after playing for the under-21s very, very recently. The biggest news of the ball is Newcastle have absolutely smashed by quite a considerable distance their transfer record, which officially is actually Joe Linton. However, Bruno Gomez and a couple of other transfers with add-ons could go above that £40 million fee. But that doesn't matter. It does not matter, everybody, because this one is a reported 58 million pounds plus add-ons 58 million pounds they have literally just said chuck the money chuck the money go on and we've got him and Real Sociedad cannot turn that down that kind of money so here we are exactly one year on from the takeover Newcastle are comfortably in the top 10 who knows what might happen in the future maybe Europe this is just the beginning everybody from yourself and Johnny see you later goodbye